Net pad is clear. Ten, nine, eight. Launch auto sequence seven, has started. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Go for launch. Vehicle is supersonic. Stage separation confirmed. Dragon, separation confirmed. Stage one is transonic. Landing lakes have deployed. And Falcon 9 has landed. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Engines full power and ignition. Lift off the Falcon 9. Go, Hosper. Go, Falcon. Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Pad 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, carrying the Utilsat Hotbird 13F oh, right, satellite. During ascent, the M1D engines will actually swivel and help steer Falcon 9. This is known as gimbal. The rocket autonom autonomously tilts the engines just a few degrees, and Falcon this gimbling supersonic. allows the vehicle to perform a gravity turn, which is when we go vertical as well as horizontal. So we're still going up, but now we're also heading horizontally away from the launch pad. Max Q. And there we heard the call out for maximum aerodynamic pressure. So now we'll throttle those nine M1D engines back up. In about a minute, we'll have three events occurring in quick succession. The first will be main engine cutoff or MECO, as it's seen there on the timeline at the bottom of your screen. MECO will be followed immediately by stage separation, which as the name indicates, the first stage and second stage will separate. And then the second engine, that Merlin vacuum engine, will ignite for SES-1, or second engine start one. Everything continues to look nominal for the first stage. It's a great view of the M1D exhaust plume. Standing by for main engine cutoff. Stage separation confirmed. And there you can see that that MVAC has ignited, that nozzle turning orange and white, those three events happening rapidly. We can see the Space Coast in the distance background of the left-hand side of the screen. Bearing separation confirmed. And there's our first look at the UTELSAT Hotbird 13F payload. Now those fairing halves that we just separated, uh, we will be attempting to retrieve them again uh, once they fall back to planet Earth. We'll be using our recovery ship, Doug, to do so. Acquisition of signal, Bermuda. We're at T plus four minutes into tonight's mission, and we're currently in the first of two planned MVAC burns uh, prior to satellite deployment. 
The next event, first stage entry burn, will occur at about T plus six and a half minutes, and you should be able to see it on your screen. For that entry burn, we'll relight three M1D engines, starting with the center one, engine nine, followed shortly thereafter by E1 and E5, which are two of the eight radial engines. That burn is the first of two planned burns and will slow the vehicle down as it passes back into the Earth's atmosphere. Now stage one has to slow down to reduce re-entry forces, which helps us uh, to recover and reuse it. Now during that entry burn, Falcon 9 is de decelerating by firing those Merlin engines, as I mentioned, uh, but it's still moving rapidly. This causes the vehicle to fly through Merlin's exhaust gases, also called the rocket's plume. As such, a thin layer of soot from Falcon 9's carbon-based fuel, kerosene, uh, is deposited on the exterior vehicle surface. Both vehicles continue to follow nominal trajectories. Now, for those that might not be familiar with why we land our rockets, reusability is key to lowering the cost of spaceflight, which enables more investments in critical science, scientific research. And the Falcon 9 first stage that's supporting today's mission will perform this entry burn for the third time. As I mentioned earlier, it previously supported a Starlink mission as well as a cargo resupply mission to the International Space Station, uh, CRS-24. So we're expecting that entry burn to begin uh, in under 20 seconds, excuse me, under 10 seconds. Stage one, FTS has saved. Everything continues to look nominal for the second stage there on your screen. Vehicles continue to follow nominal trajectories. Good indication there that everything is on track for both the first and second stage. In about 30 seconds, we'll have the next milestone coming up. That's when we will shut down our MVAC engine or Merlin vacuum engine there on your screen on the second stage. Stage one entry burn startup. So there on the left-hand side of your screen, you can see those three M1D engines have relit the center engine and two radial engines. Stage one entry burn shut down. All right, we heard the call out that stage one entry burn has concluded. As I mentioned, that is the first of two burns that the first stage will perform. Standing by for second engine cutoff one. And back shut down. All right, we started to see that that MVAC nozzle was losing that bright white glow, indicating second engine cutoff. Nominal parking orbit. Heard good orbital insertion there for the second stage. Stage one landing burn. From there on the left hand side of your screen, you can see that the first stage has begun the landing burn. Stage one landing leg deploy. Stage one landing confirmed. And there you have it. That landing marks SpaceX's 147th recovery of an orbital class rocket, including first stage landings for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. Now, the mission isn't over just yet. The second stage is now embarking on its first coast phase. After the coast phase, we'll light that MVAC engine for a second time around T plus 29 minutes. 
So hang tight. We'll see you back here in about 20 minutes. In the meantime, sit back, relax, and enjoy some late night space tunes. Welcome back to the webcast of the Falcon 9 mission carrying the Hotbird 13F satellite for our customer UTELSAT. Uh, and we're just a, about five seconds away from the second ignition of that MVAC engine. MVAC startup. All right, there we can see that has begun where this burn is planned to last about one minute. Uh, and it will carry the second stage and the Hotbird 13F payload into the orbit needed to deploy the satellite. We can see that orange glow beginning to develop again on the MVAC nozzle. Another 15 seconds remaining in this second engine burn. MVAC shutdown. And there we heard call out that we had good shutdown of that second uh, engine start, or excuse me, for that second engine cutoff. First. Nominal deploy orbit. All right, there we just heard confirmation uh, that we were able to place it in a good orbit. There we can see that that Hotbird 13F satellite still attached to Falcon 9's second stage and is set to deploy uh, in just under three and a half minutes. Now, as far as the mission, uh, we had an on-time liftoff at 1.22 a.m. Eastern Time, followed by successful ascent, stage separation, first stage landing, and two second stage engine burns. As a reminder, UTELSAT is a world-leading satellite operator in a footprint covering Europe, Africa, the Middle East, Asia, and the Americas. Payload separation confirmed. And there you see it on your screen. Payload separation confirmed for the Hotbird 13F payload. And with confirmation of successful payload deploy, we'll, we'll go ahead and end our launch webcast for tonight. All of us here at SpaceX want to give a big thank you to our customer UTELSAT for entrusting us with today's mission. We also want to give a shout out to the Range and Federal Aviation Administration for supporting today's mission. As I mentioned earlier, today's launch concludes uh, our 185th overall mission to date and 47th launch this year. Thanks to all of our viewers tuning in and thank you for your continued support. Have a good night and, acquisition signal, Maldives. and we'll see you soon.